The thing about being a chef is there is no real end game. All you can do is keep making it better and better, keep trying new techniques and keep refining what you do. But for me, that's the most exciting thing. What I love about my style of cooking is it's, it's a whole circle. We plant the seeds in the ground, we, uh, we grow them, we see the whole thing through, and then you see it on the plate at the end. I feel a lot more involved in it that way. Craftsmanship is so important. I think you have to have attention to detail all the way through the process, from selecting the right variety to grow, right the way through the farming, to the harvesting, and then the actual technique that we put into the food as well. Creating the perfect dish is a, is a long time in the thought process, usually sort of six months. It can be getting the idea, but usually you've got to wait for that produce to then come into season. So you stewed on this idea for a while. In that time, I like to try and make the uh, crockery. So we work with a local potter and uh, I'll get the dish designed and then the produce will come and then we'll work on the actual dish itself and the whole thing will hopefully come together. Seasonality is everything when it comes to our cooking. You'd be lost without it. The lovely thing is that generally ingredients that are in season together go really well together. Okay, so this is a beetroot dish uh, using a variety called Pablo, which are beautiful sweet beetroots. We bake them in the skins so they stay really sweet but lose some of that sort of bitterness you get with beetroots. And then I dehydrate them so they're really quite dry and then rehydrate them again in a mixture of beetroot juice and black currants as well. That works really well because you get this sort of chewy, almost candied, pastel -y texture to the beetroot, which is fascinating. Serve that with uh, a sauce that's also made out of black currant juice and beetroot juice. So that, they're both things that we grow and then preserve from the um, summer and they can serve at this time of year in the winter as well. And then uh, I think what's really interesting is that the goat's cheese at the end, it's got a lovely acidity to it, but we just uh, freeze the goat's cheese with liquid nitrogen, so it's really crispy, and then when you eat it, it melts perfectly on your tongue. Seasonality is just so key. And it's very important that my team feel exactly the same way. We're all inspired by that. But I think when you're out in the middle of the countryside, it's quite easy to be sort of engulfed by what's around you. And that, that's how we create the food that we create. So I love this dish. This is really everything that we're, we're about. Um, there's zero food miles. Uh, I've got a beautiful piece of fallow deer that was shot just down on the farm uh, with some cauliflower and garlic a little faggot of the deer's offal with some red cabbage. So it's all super seasonal things, lots of brassicas, but done in a really interesting way. When you're trying to cook super seasonally and locally, you've got to find interesting techniques. I love this black garlic. So black garlic is a Japanese technique originally, uh, but how you make it is you keep the garlic at 60 degrees for six weeks. Over that period of time, it just very slowly caramelizes, loses all the acrid harshness you get from raw garlic, and becomes super sweet and sticky and delicious, almost molasses in flavor. It goes really well with roasted meat. Precision is really everything with this. The meat itself is a wild animal, so you've got to know exactly how to treat it. This is not a farmed piece of meat that's going to be the same every time, so you've got to use your technique and your intuition to make it absolutely delicious. With something like black garlic, it's a six week process, so if you get it wrong at the start, you've wasted six weeks of your life, so you've really got to focus and make sure everything is perfect. I think what separates this dish from the ordinary is you couldn't get it anywhere else because this deer came from just over there. This black garlic, I've made it. So if you want to recreate this dish, you couldn't without my ingredients. That's what makes it special.